Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today I'm back with a new art journal layout. For this layout I'm going to use these adorable stamp sets, these are by Paper Archie and I'm going to use the flowers as well as the butterfly. There is also a stencil that matches perfectly the designs on my stamp sets and uh, I'm going to open up the package so you can see what type of uh, stencils these are so you can actually separate the inside design from the outside and there are many different ways to use them. For this particular layout I am going to use the leaf. Usually I start by creating my background but this time I was so happy with these uh, flower designs that I wanted to stamp them and see how they look. So first I'm working on a mixed media paper, this is by Ranger, and I'm going to stamp a bunch of flowers and some of the leaves. The way I usually work with my focal points is that I stamp them on a separate piece of paper so I never stamp directly on my background and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So once I have enough flowers and leaves for my layout, I will go ahead and use my scissors to cut them out. Of course at this stage I don't know exactly how many leaves and flowers I will need so I went ahead and stamped a bunch just to have enough. And the truth is that I ended up using every image that I have stamped. I'm also going to use this beautiful butterfly and now I will go ahead and use my scissors to cut out everything. Now at this stage you can just uh, take this uh, piece of paper and go on uh, your TV, watch your favorite series and cut them out. I just love cutting out uh, images, I don't mind, I find it very relaxing so I really enjoy this process. And now all the images are ready to go, I am going to bring in my art journal now and work on my background. When I'm working on my Moleskine art journal, I am uh, going to directly apply some uh, fresco finish paint. This is by Paper Archie in my two favorite colors. The one is called uh, Caribbean Sea, the lighter one, and uh, the darker one is Captain Peacock. You will find the links down below in the description area to all the supplies that I'm using today with links to many online stores so you can uh, pick your favorite. I haven't prepared my pages at all, so I haven't applied gesso or anything else. I am directly applying my paint with brush. And especially for this fresco finish paint by Paper Archie, this is chalk paint, so it has enough tooth and you don't really need to prepare your pages with uh, gesso. So I am applying uh, my paint with brush strokes vertically from top to bottom and I'm applying the first layer. You see I'm not doing any uh, difficult technique here, I'm just applying my color there, just with uh, vertical uh, movements. And if you find it quite difficult to apply your paint all over your page, you can always dip your brush a little bit in water, just like I am doing here, just to help me spread uh, the paint easily. Now notice how I wipe uh, the water from my brush, so now my brush is uh, quite dry and I'm dipping uh, the brush on uh, the darker paint, so that's uh, Captain Peacock and I'm uh, doing some vertical uh, brush strokes again from top to bottom but this time I'm not trying to cover up the whole background, I just want to have those uh, brush strokes there. These are going to add some uh, dimension on my page. So nothing is uh, totally flat there. Now I'm not going to do any crazy techniques on my background today since I want to work with my flowers and add uh, crazy colors on them. So I want to uh, the background to keep it quite subtle and uh, quite plain. And this is why I will not introduce another color on my background. Instead I am going to add some interest by using this uh, stencil uh, leaf. And this comes from the set uh, that I have uh, shown you in the beginning. You will find the links down below. I am going over it with my dry brush and uh, my darker paint. Just to have a little bit of shadow there. And I hope you can see how it looks. So it blends nicely with the background and although there is something interesting going on back there, it still stays at the background. Now we'll go ahead and uh, add uh, this detail in uh, different parts of my background, but at this stage I don't know exactly where I'm going to stick the flowers. So most of these uh, details are going to get lost once I stick everything down. But you will still be able to see some of uh, that stenciling there. Thank you. 
Now I'm happy with all the stenciling going on, so I will go ahead and do some stamping. So we'll use one of these uh, background stamps from uh, the same stamp set as the flowers, and uh, I'm going to stamp it all over the background. Now notice that uh, I'm using a, an archival ink, uh, that's an ink that is permanent, and it's very close to the color that uh, the background is. I am using such an ink just because I want to keep everything very subtle. I don't want to stamp with, uh, for example, black, because this would uh, bring everything in the foreground and it would look very busy. So the, now the stamping blends nicely with the background. And now another technique that I always like to do is to do some splashes. Now splashes are not for everyone, you do it only if you like it. I just love the look so I always uh, do some splashes on my background. Uh, for this I am using uh, Snowflake which is another paper arts fresco finish paint and uh, I have diluted it with uh, water and uh, I used a thin brush to do the splashes. And now I am repeating the same process with black this time, but again I am using a very thin brush which means that I will end up having tiny little dots that are, are not going to overwhelm my background. I like to use uh, white splashes because they blend nicely with the white highlights that I always add at the end of my work and uh, black binds nicely with uh, the black sentiments and uh, black quotes that I always stamp at the end. So now here is a close-up look of uh, how my background is looking at the moment and now I am going to go ahead and play around with all the images. And just because I have cut out images and not stamped them directly on my background, I do have the opportunity to play around and see how I like everything to go down on my pages. Once I'm happy with the placement, I will commit and stick everything down using my matte gel medium. Now, as I am sticking them down, I will make sure that I cover them up with my matte medium, just because I am planning to color everything with my big brush markers. Now all the images are down, my matte medium is dry and I am using my scissors to cut out the excess paper. And notice here that I don't like to work back to back on my layouts. So if I get an idea to thread something or to make a slit or anything else, or even if uh, my paint bleeds, uh, I will not ruin what's at the back. When I finish, I can stick everything together. So now it's time to do my coloring. For that I will be using my favorite big brush markers. I am going to spread a little bit of uh, ink at the beginning with a lighter color and then I will move on to a darker color and do the shading. I am smudging the ink with my fingers and uh, remember that I can do this technique just because I'm working on a non-porous surface, which means that uh, just because I have applied matte medium all over my images, I am able to do that. And why I love these markers is that they dry permanent, so no matter what I do on top, they will not smudge or smear once they dry. This is a technique that I really love. I keep uh, back to it again and again. And um, I think that it's uh, not only very rewarding because of the look that you get is amazing, but at the same time, it's really quick. So I'm going to put on some music and let you see how I colored some of the images. And then I will catch you back once everything is colored.
So I had a lot of fun playing with my markers and coloring all the flowers in crazy colors and now I'm using uh, my white gel pen and uh, doing another favorite technique of mine. I'm going to work on top of uh, the flowers and add some highlights here and there. Notice that uh, my gel pen wasn't working on top of uh, my inked flowers and that's because the ink wasn't dry. So I used my heat gun to speed up the drying process and now everything is dry so my uh, gel the pen is working perfectly now, as you can see. Now I'm just doing uh, random lines here and there, there is no reasoning uh, really, no right or wrong. I just try to separate one flower from the other, as well as adding some highlights. Notice that I don't draw uh, big uh, white lines, they are not perfect and uh, they certainly are very short and uh, sketchy. So to this way I match the rest of the design. I'm going to repeat the same process for the other page, so the butterfly as well as the rest of the flowers. And I'm also going to use a black uh, pen, that's a thin uh, marker there, to add uh, antennas on my butterfly. Now I always like to have a border on my layout, so I'm going to use a marker and draw a line all around the edge. And then I'm going to use a thicker uh, brush marker and color outside the line. I usually like to add borders on my layouts because they frame my art and they make it look more finished. And here's another thing that I always like to do. I use my white gel pen and uh, make a thin white line just outside the black edge. This helps uh, my page pop even more against that uh, black border. And now it's time to stamp my quote. For that I am going to use these uh, alphabet stamps. These are foam clink stamps by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to stamp the word happy with black archival ink. And this is where I make the mess. I wasn't able to stamp correctly. I had to stamp on top once more and you see that uh, my stamping isn't clear. I made a mess. I am not able to wipe it out since this is archival ink and it's already permanent. So I'm just going to show you how I am going to cover up this mess and make it work for my page. Now, of course, when this happens, there are two easy ways to cover up things. One is to use the same uh, acrylic paint that you used for the background and uh, cover up uh, the mess. The other thing is to cut out another flower, for example, and stick it on top. But uh, in my cases, this is not uh, that bad. I will go ahead and use a black brush marker. Make sure that I have a nice uh, thick letter there. And then I am going to use my white uh, gel pen and go around the letters. This way I will add some definition to the letters, help them separate from each other. And at the same time I am going to uh, bind everything together since I have all those white details on the flowers. I think it's going to work fine. So I would normally use my white gel pen and add the highlight only on one side of the letter if everything was stamped correctly. But uh, in this case you see I am outlining everything. You'll see that everything is going to work fine at the end. And that's the beauty of uh, art journaling. There are no mistakes. You can always uh, work it out and make it uh, look as if it was intended to be like that. And just because I don't know when to stop with uh, little details, I went ahead and added some dots on my letters just to make them more happy, more whimsical looking. And now it's time to stamp the rest of my quote and that comes from another Paper Archie stamp set. And uh, I'm going to use the one that says being happy never goes out of style. But just because I always want to highlight the most important uh, uh, word of my quote, I wanted to have uh, happy bigger. And that's what I did. So uh, as I'm stamping, I'm going to omit the word happy from the stamp and I'm going to stamp the rest of it. And my layout is pretty much finished. I just decided to add some dots here and there using my Nouveau Drops and I'm using the white one. I always like to add uh, three of them on each area. And I think uh, these uh, little dots complete that whimsical and happy look. And that was the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of the art journal that I made for today.
Don't forget to click on my face and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you need more inspiration, you can click any of the two videos that I have done a while back. Thank you all for watching.